Hi, hello, and welcome. I'm definitely not Switchikins, and you're watching the Zeros to Hero series, where I invite the lowest rated applicants to my M Plus runs for fun. In this episode, we're going to go through the normal Emergency Fill raid. I'm not really going to show much of it. I'm just going to show you if I got any loot. And after that, we're going to run some M Plus. They dragged the Ancient on the other side over a line multiple times, and like most of the raid is dead, but we're still going to kill the boss because she was like 5% when we went into that. That was so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Went through a whole ass raid and the only thing I got was a greater ember and four pieces of trash loot, so gotta love it. I accidentally wasn't recording this, but we have a rogue with 613 rating and a druid with 327 rating. There were some 1.2k and 1.4k people applying, I chose to take these over that. We also had a priest that just left, which made me try to start recording again, only to realize that my software for recording wasn't even turned on, so I was just sitting here pressing buttons like an idiot. Another thing that I guess I recorded or failed to record was that I got Vakash the Shadowed Inferno, but that's a holy weapon. I guess I got it with an off, uh, off spec roll from the normal raid, so I guess I did get something from the normal raid. Other than that, I also got some upgrades. I think I upgraded my pants to 8 out of 8 veteran with the Drake Crests along along with uh, one upgrade for the accelerating sand glass to 5 out of 8 veteran. And I think that's all I could really get out of it, which got me an item level. That's amazing, I know. Oh wait, no, I think I also upgraded the ring twice. 2 out of 8 to 4 out of 8 champion, so... A few upgrades, nothing particularly exciting. It is very hard to find a tank and healer when you have a 438 rating, especially for an Everbloom with bolstering. I think if I had a 13 Everbloom, this would already be like a full group because there would be no bolstering, so people wouldn't care. And here we go, 1.9k tank. I am straight up just going to take them. I do not have, I, I can't. I've been sitting here for like half an hour, it feels like, trying to put a party together, so I'm just going to take whoever comes. And now we hope for a healer before the tank decides to leave, like the first healer decided to leave and a 2.1k <laughs> never mind i knew i should have just clicked invite oh 486 oh come on yeah get we'll invite them i really don't want this series to go like this but I, I don't have much choice if there's nobody applying i have to take what i can get even if it is people that are geared and decently rated you know all right here we go with the uh Everbloom 14, I unfortunately had to invite a tank that is decently rated, as well as a healer that's even better rated with 486 item level. Tank's trying to do a conservative pull, it looks like to me. I'm going to hold my cooldowns because I know that there's going to be bigger pulls coming up. I think I understand this pull because of the uh, bursting, or not bursting, sorry, bolstering. I always confuse the two. I think of the right effect that they cause, but I think of the wrong name. This is the pull I was expecting. This is what I was holding my cooldowns for. I'm going to go ahead and just drop absolutely everything on it. It works out a little bit with my Wake of Ashes coming up on time. We're going to give freedom to the tank. We're going to cleanse this and heal the other. Healer's probably using his uh, cleanses on the person that is poisoned, which is them right now. I'm going to cleanse them as well. Screw it. Uh, the reason I gave freedom to the tank is because these Dread Petals cause a debuff. The debuff is a movement speed debuff, but it also reduces our increases the damage taken by the target so if i can give the tank freedom it will remove the movement speed and the other part of the effect by removing the whole effect see it's stacking up right now it's the dread petal pollen it stacks up to 12 stacks at that point it does quite a bit i'm going to cleanse the afflicted soul hopefully the healer cleanses this other part i'm going to heal myself tank's not really grabbing aggro off this thing we're going to go ahead and stun it once it's unstunned it'll start casting again i'll kick it maybe we can move it away from the rest of this group or maybe we could pull it into that group i don't know we'll see what the tank decides to do right now we're just hitting one mob okay we're skipping the entirety of this group on this side it seems like i don't have a cleanse available for the healer the healer is also not cleansing it we're again fighting only one mob maybe raiding isn't everything huh but i guess the tank just wants to skip this group uh we had a shroud but it looks like the rogue got hit by some kind of dot or something or accidentally canceled it i don't know i'm going to drop all my cooldowns here again because i believe we won't be able to pull more than this number of targets anytime soon. I'm gonna give the tank movement speed, which will remove the slow effect and the debuff I was talking about. I'm going to cleanse that afflicted soul. I'm going to never mind. It got corroded, so it got silenced. Managed to get my wake of ashes out during my wings. That's good. A little bit messy with the cooldown usage here because I don't know how big of a pull I can expect. 
I'm going to blind that. I had an interrupt available. I trust that somebody else would interrupt. There's the choking vines. Okay, a little lost in the sauce. Healer doesn't seem to be aware, even with their item level and rating, how the afflicted work. Either that, or I'm just a lot faster at clearing them than the healer is. I'm just going to drop my cooldowns, because their next fight is also going to be... I'm going to use my human racial to get out of that. But the next fight is also going to be a um, anything with the stuff stuff. Just three enemies. So I may as well use it here and recover it by the time it's time to fight the boss. Although, I guess I don't really need it at the start of the boss fight. I need it about 20, 30 seconds in. I'm going to kick those choking vines. That is all the nature school of magic, so the mob won't be able to cast for a little bit. I have Wake of Ashes available. I'm going to use it. My cooldowns are pretty much in sync now. I'm going to stun that because I might cool down for the interrupt is not back up. I don't want anyone to get stunned because that reduces the, dam the group's damage output. I can cleanse one of these. I'm looking at the healer. The healer's doing exactly nothing about them. Oh, no, he used Light of Dawn on one target. Or Okay, well, that's interesting. We are positioning. People are standing in front of the boss. Not ideal. I really shouldn't have used my cooldowns there. I wasn't thinking i was nervous uh looking at people positioned in front of the boss because i'm worried about them dying to the parched breath we have a full melee group so it's going to be interesting positioning these i guess that's something i didn't even think about when i was just inviting the <laughs> lowest rated players i could get and then also inviting which i'm cause it's the first healer and tank i could get because it just took way too long oh i have some cooldowns to use they're a little bit desynced because i stopped using uh divine stopped myself from using divine tool before uh the damage amp period started. The druid has a habit of just standing in these. I guess he has no way to hit the boss otherwise. Some of these will be cleared soon with the unchecked growth. I'm just hoping that the tank does take aggro of the unchecked growths. Not exactly happening, but we get some cooldowns to use. Maybe clear this out. I'm going to bubble to drop aggro because the tank is not hitting them. I guess raiding isn't everything because the tank seems pretty lost in the sauce to me too. I'm going to cleanse and we're going to heal the other one. Damage amp period is over. I'm just going to hold all my cooldowns because we didn't really do a lot. We're going to lay on hands that rogue that stood in, in the frontal. Not exactly ideal. I'll use my Wake of Ashes. It should be back up by the time the damage amp period starts again. This is significantly messier than I expected it to be. I'm going to save my cooldowns, or sorry, save my um, heal for the afflicted rather than the rogue. This paladin's using a lot of Light of Dawn, which is confusing. I don't think you're meant to really use that in M+. But I guess we're all melee, so it kind of works out. I'm going to drop all of my cooldowns now because it's the damage amp period or phase or whatever you want to call it. I overlap my judgment there. Not ideal. Look at souls coming out. I can heal the other one. I'm going to use my defensive here because, okay, never mind. The tank did take aggro. I'm going to focus on boss DPS before he gets out of the damage amp period. That would really suck if we had to go through another one of these phases and he's dead. Good. Good riddance. This is starting to get messy. So far, so good. Tank seems to be, I don't know, somewhat experienced he knows where he needs to position the boss i think we might run into an issue of not having enough percent because we've skipped well two groups now we'll see what else the tank pulls but right now i am a little worried about us not having percent by the end of the dungeon but we can always go back and grab some more mobs it's not a huge deal the healer definitely seems a little bit uh how shall i say lost in the sauce their healing is light of dawn based which is weird for an m plus holy paladin they don't really usually use that here we're pulling an abomination i'm going to focus all my dps or all my attacks into the abomination itself rather than the surrounding mobs i am doing a aoe of course but i'm targeting getting the abomination first i'm going to use a defensive here uh we have a bolstered thingy we need to the tank went down i tried to run away but it was too little too late the bolster took the tank out i feel like we're gonna to have to wait for these bolster stacks to go away before we pull that berserker okay they went away so we should be fine thanks waiting for everyone to group up again okay are we are we going to fight one mob at a time not no he pulled the abomination okay my cooldowns are desynced but i will use them i'm going to cleanse that poison there's two of these guys coming up so i'm going to heal one heal the other there we go noxious eruption coming through luckily it's tyrannical and not fortified because fortified this could be a uh a bad time. I'm going to go ahead and start using all my cooldowns here because the abomination is worth using cooldowns on. Tank finally got aggro off the cultivator. I'm going to cleanse that now. I'm not going to cleanse the poison because the duration of it is almost done. Here comes a couple of afflicted souls. We're going to get rid of them like so. I did see that the healer was looking at the soul to heal it, but I'm also a little worried about how this healer is going to heal us through the damage portions of the next boss and uh, on a 14 tyrannical. They have the gear for it. They absolutely can do it, but if they have the game 
knowledge to do so, I do not know. Okay, we're pulling everything here. I'm looking at the cultivator to interrupt it as soon as possible. There we go. I'm just going to go ahead and taunt this because it has aggro on the healer because the tank just didn't hit it enough. I have an interrupt for this. Very good. I'm not going to spend my cooldowns because these mobs are all almost dead. The berserkers are spinning on top of us because we all have... We're all melee. I also forgot to put on... Okay, I guess we... We pulled this by accident. Um, choking wines, I'm going to erupt. Then I'm going to get rid of this. And this is such a pain in the ass. Oh, man. I guess it just goes to show that raiding isn't everything. I'm going to keep saying that. It's like a little thing I say to soothe myself. I guess what I can do is just do as much damage as possible. And hopefully we just make it through. Choking wines hitting me from back there. I'm not going to have it cleansed. Or it be interrupted i'm thinking about bubbling so i can take care of these but i think i can take care of them even when this expires like so that mob is not going to be taken care of we're going to interrupt it to hopefully make it move over uh people are just standing in the berserker spin and dying this is <laughs> one of the runs of all time this is such a shit show <laughs> oh man um this person is not releasing for some reason i, I wouldn't be able to tell you why okay the healer is doing supposedly 100k HPS. I don't... It doesn't really feel like it. Tank is just running ahead and pulling more. Okay, we'll let the tank deal with those guys. I'm going to try and kill this because it's just on the healer. I'm going to taunt it so that it hits me and not the healer. I'm going to use the defensive because it's hitting me right now. Good job, healer. You interrupted it. We're going to cleanse these. Who? Why, the, why did the healer pull this? Why, <laughs> why did the healer pull this? I'm going to try and rip aggro off of it and bring it to the to the tank. I'm going to cleanse the tank. I'm going to give freedom to the tank. This will reduce some of the damage he's taking. I'm going to bubble now that I'm on top of the tank. Healer's being hit. We're going to give him bop. That will drop aggro off of him. The tank should have aggro of everything now. I'm trying to DPS enough to kill all of the uh, tanks dead because of the bolstering from two groups being pulled. The healer pulled that group for no real reason. How do you get the 486 item level and 2.5k rating? Uh, the tank seems to be contemplating leaving. He's just kind of standing there questioning his life choices as am I at this moment. I think the tank is typing something very mean-spirited or, or just giving up i'm not i'm not certain okay he's mounting up let's see if he goes in or out. he's going in let's go <laughs> let's give him crusader rl let's get him over there uh i don't know what this means no hablo that's probably french to be honest but <laughs> <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just stick to that from the last episode hopefully the healer doesn't decide to pull a random group again for no reason i don't want to use all my cooldowns here i'm gonna stun this so it doesn't jump and start spinning on us because the players seem to have a thing of just standing in the spin okay we're moving a whole bunch for some reason i'm not sure why then he listened to my <laughs> cries of anguish <laughs> about this being a shit show so she rolled her chair over and is now looking at what's happening okay we're looking to do a pull with two abominations after not being able to survive one of them okay we're not okay so we we pulled more we pulled both the abomination i have ag okay <laughs> This is such a and I was worried that I invited people that were going to make this too easy. <laughs> the two people that made this too easy, supposedly. I don't know which of them plays worse. So again, rating isn't everything. The healer's pulling some HPS, it looks like. We're surviving both of these. We're going to give the tank a freedom. I heard the... I can't see where it is. I can't see where the... Oh, I... Oh, no. I... Oh, no. What What do I even do here? I just... I just... I die, I guess. I came in the right time to get five, six stacks of bolster on the abominations and get punched to death. Yeah, the tank is giving up. Um, Now I have an Everbloom 13, so that might be easier to put a group together for because there's no bolstering. I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave party. So, yeah, I guess it really doesn't matter who I invite because... So far, people with shitty rating have been way better than the person who had 2.5k and 486 item level. So we'll see how this goes in the 13. Okay, I've taken just a moment to um, recombobulate myself after being discombobulated so thoroughly by the previous group. We're running a 13 Everbloom now because, you know, let's just see if we can find people interested in a 13 because there's no bolstering. We have an 870 rating uh, Demon Hunter. I'm just gonna take him. That's like 
decently low rating, right? 456 item level. They have time to plus plus 15 Everbloom. I guess since it is just the start, I should just wait. There's going to be people that know how to play. Yeah, 483 item level, 2.4 carry. I'm just going to decline them. I know they, you know, have a little low B with them, but I, I don't want someone like that. Although, judging by my previous run, it doesn't really matter. They could be completely lost in the sauce. I'm just going to go ahead and invite this, uh, this demon hunter. Screw it. 1.6k rated paladin. I don't know. I'm going to wait on this one. I should probably wait until I have a tank and healer. Tank and or or healer I should say because then I can invite people I'll have more applicants then right so then I can actually be picky and invite people that that don't know or do know how to play or whatever I will however this time try and get an actual ranged character in <laughs> because that first boss was a shit show partially because the tank never picked up aggro partially because people didn't really understand the mechanics so they just kept standing in the same spot over and over again and taking damage 484 healer that's trying to do a 13 are they maybe they need some worm crests I don't know I'm tempted to take them because I don't think I'll get many applicants. They're also ranged, being preservation. Ah, tempted, tempted. I'll give it a minute. So it's 1704. I'll invite them if nobody else has applied because I'm just, uh, I'm worried. Well, they declined just now, so never mind. But that's good because I, I don't really want someone that decked out. I'm just hoping that the demoniac isn't looking at me, the decline people <laughs> that are super high rated. That could make this easy. A shadow priest. That could be a range that we could use, but 1.4k rating. We're going to wait a little bit until we decide on them. Another paladin. Between the two, the chat is the, I need to just start inviting people more quickly. Okay, we have a demonology warlock with a 5 everbloom clear, clear 1.2k rating, 459 item level. We're just going to take them. So that I have a ranged character. I just need one ranged character. That's all I want, right? That's that's fair. This mage is higher rated than the warlock, so I'm glad I took the warlock. As you can see, people with roughly this kind of rating are applying to the 13s and 14s, so I think it's sort of accurate for me to invite these people. I'm gonna go ahead and delist and relist because having a fresher listing helps actually get people more interested in the listing. I didn't need another DPS, so I don't mind delisting while there was a DPS applied. I do need a tank and a healer now. I may just take whoever applies first because this is taking a while, but we'll see. I am absolutely desperate, so I'm just going to invite these people. I've been waiting for like, I don't know, a long time. I think at least 10, 15 minutes I've been trying to put this group together. So I'm just going to invite this duo, even though they're they're rated basically the same way the previous 14 group was. Ugh, they declined. No. Gosh darn it. Oh, this is this is even better. OK, so <laughs> I just need to click invite this. I just need to click invite. I could have had a tank and a healer. <laughs> OK, when I like what I see, I'm going to click invite and then I'm going to talk about who I invited because this keeps happening to me. We have a DK tank, 1.2k rated. I'm taking them and I'm hoping that this attracts a healer to the group. 1.2k rating isn't all that amazing and they've only cleared a plus plus two ever bloom so they might still be learning the dungeon, who knows. And we have a healer applicant, 1240 rating. We're just gonna take them and there we go. We finally have a group together. It took me over 20 minutes to actually put the group together. Well, our demon hunter up and left for no real reason. And we're going to grab this uh, 157 rating balance druid and hopefully that doesn't uh, upset people because they saw higher rated applicants <laughs> and I just took them. Let's go, Snooky. And so we begin the 13 Everbloom. I'm going to reset my details and show you the group. This is the group. Tank is 453, 448 DPS healer, 456 myself. I'm going to go ahead and just kick this real quick so that it groups up a little better. I'm going to give freedom to Dark Frost so that he doesn't get the debuff from the plants and to clear this debuff, the stun with my human racial. Now I don't have to worry about burst or sorry, bolstering. I keep calling it the wrong thing as much. So I'm just going to go ahead and blast. I'm going to cleanse this real quick. And by this, I mean the poison that the uh, little bug things, the stingers apply. Oh, we actually have someone who's cleansing the afflicted. That's amazing. I don't have to do all of it myself. A death grip would be nice. Good job. I'm going to go ahead and cleanse this person from a poison. The monk can cleanse poisons, but we're going to leave that cleanse from the monk in order to allow him to dispel the stun in case it goes through and nobody has an interrupt or anything like that because the stun is a magic effect if you dispel it the enemy stops channeling it just checking behind to see if we pull the stinger we did pull the stinger we're going to go ahead and just hit the stinger so that we grab aggro and bring him over to the tank who will then take care of it by grabbing aggro back okay i'm going to use all my cooldowns here throw a cleanse in this person's going to get kabloid. It sounds like a weird kabloid. He's going to go kaboom is what I wanted to say, but then I wanted to say they're going to get blown up. So I said they're going to get kabloid. And that sounds like somebody's going to perform oral sex on them. So I'm a little confused now. <laughs> he looked over at Danny and she's even more confused. 
Always giving you blowies. Moving on. It would really be nice if we grip that. We did grip it. There we go. Bit of a messy pull. I'm gonna go ahead and heal this so that the healer doesn't have to worry about it. Pink is not using uh, his dancing rune weapon. He should use that on cooldown, but that's okay. He's doing well enough. He's actually gripping the mobs that are far away. We're gonna look for a kick on this. Never, no, I'm not because my kick's on cooldown. Never mind. We're gonna blind this just to prevent that stun from going through. I'm gonna use all my cooldowns here. Interrupt that heal. No reason to let it go through. I haven't applied my Blade of Justice debuff or expurgation, which is a mistake because my whole tier set revolves around it, but I've been busy commentating and talking about what I'm gonna do and not gonna do. I'm gonna kick this. That way they all group up on the tank the mender talks for a little bit and then moves over to your location we're gonna stun this beam coming through from snooki snooki taking care of all the interrupts we need for the rest of this group very good good job snooki all right it looks like we're not going to pull the plants along with the boss some tanks do that some tanks don't I'm gonna put a square on the tank keep track of where they are somebody grabbed aggro off of them we're going to cleanse one of these and heal the other then the healer doesn't have to worry about it. I don't worry too much about wasting my DPS here because, honestly, I have to wait for the parched thing to start before I can actually start DPSing the boss in proper. It's a waste of cooldowns to use it before the damage jump starts. So I'm just DPSing using my basic abilities, and then once he is parched and has a Brittle Bark active, the debuff, that is when I'm actually going to DPS him with my cooldowns. And there we go. That has just started. We do have two range, so they can actually position these root things all over the place. Snooki is positioning in kind of a poor spot. There's no real orbs that are going to come to that location location unless the tank moves the boss which i don't think he will so these roots are going to be wasted for the most part tank is standing behind the boss still or rather in front of the boss instead of positioning in such a way that he can more easily take aggro from the unchecked growth that would be ideal if he would do that but he's not doing so so i'm kind of stuck with aggro here he should be looking to take aggro off of these guys okay he's taunting i guess i'll bring them over when i have aggro maybe that helps him pick them up i'll help him help us the boss is about to reactivate so i'm gonna get behind him that way I won't get hit by the frontal. We're going to take care of one of those afflicted souls. And I'm again going to hold all of my cooldowns for when the boss is in the brittle bark phase. Because he's got 18 million hit points. It feels like a waste to blow my cooldowns on that. Though maybe I would have them available for when he... For the next group. Ah, I think I actually will blow my cooldowns just now. Ah, uh, Snooki's sad because Snooki has aggro. Two afflicted souls. We're going to go ahead and cleanse one of them. There we go. The mouse over macro was giving me some trouble. Boss will definitely die during this damage amp phase. Again, it's ideal if you spend your cooldowns within the damage amp phase, but I wanted to have my cooldowns available for the next pull that we do rather than just have them sit there for like half a minute or more. Now they're going to be a little bit desynced because my Wake of Ashes is up and available or longer than I'd like it to be, but that's okay. I'm not going to use anything but Wake of Ashes on this group because it's relatively easy. We're going to give the tank a lay on hands because I don't trust that, and we're going to Wake of Ashes now. This is a big group, so I would like to use all of my cooldowns. My instincts are telling me to do so but they're going to die very shortly and they're going to be sitting there with like 15 seconds of wings left and doing nothing with it i can't give the tank freedom again he's mounted up he'll be able to move on to the next group relatively quickly the patrol is in a good spot over there so you can pull that with this bolstering isn't a thing on 13s so we good we do have range this time so we don't have to worry about the berserkers massacring our group i'm just going to go ahead and give the tank a sack he should be using his dancing rune blade more but i think he's still over pulling that group too that's that's a lot i'm going to use a defensive here trying to focus now on actually killing things as quickly as possible that will actually reduce the damage being taken by the group i gave the tank freedom because he had false tanks of the dread pedal thingy and freedom removes that like i discussed earlier and we managed to kill the big mob before he did his little uh, aoe dot thing again which is very good because usually they'll survive just long enough to get that one cast off okay smaller pull this time around i'm okay with that we have to stun the berserker so he doesn't even jump if he's stunned when he's supposed to use the ability he'll just put it on cooldown without actually using them which is a great way to make sure that you know your group doesn't get damaged because you can stun them afterwards but the, at that point they've already done the jump and the jump itself does damage before they even start spinning i'm going to try blinding okay that blind didn't really work out but no big deal bit of a waste of a blind to be honest but there's not much I need to use the blind on here. I'm not going to use my cooldowns anymore. I'm going to hold them for the next group because I think the tank will do a big enough pull to warrant me using all my cooldowns. Yes, he will. Beautiful. That is all of my cooldowns being used up. And that, as you can see, melts the group very, very quickly. I don't want to use freedom on the tank just yet because he hasn't fo started fighting anything. We're going to use it now and that'll protect him for longer.
longer by me having used it later. I need to try and interrupt that. Very good. Being trolled by the foliage. It's making my camera jump around. We're going to get rid of that afflicted soul so the healer doesn't have to worry about it. One more wake of ashes. We need to stun this berserker so that he can't do his jump. There we go. You just saw it go on cooldown. These abilities, by the way, those are the mob's abilities. And I use that in order to know when I need the stun to prevent the jump. Now, there's an abomination here, but there's also an abomination in the next group. Luckily, I have all my cooldowns coming up so I can actually protect us. We're going to sack the tank. We're going to cleanse the tank. We're going to give freedom to the tank. And now I'm going to go big pew pew and zoog zoog and boom boom and whatever the heck you want. We're going to cleanse this. We're going to heal this. I'm saving the healer some trouble here. I'm thinking about bubbling, but the healer put the health back up. That's amazing commentary. The healer put the health back up. Very good. Healer do good things for us. Very informative. Sorry, I'm a little flustered because this is a nasty pull and I was worried about dying, but I now trust the healer. If he can pull through double dot from abominations, I think we're good for the rest of the dungeon, even though it is tyrannical, but still. Going to help heal everyone to full and then the tank can go ahead and pull. We don't... Uh, I'm going to use drums here. I forgot to use it earlier in the dungeon because, you know, I just... I don't I don't remember to do that, to be honest with you. I'm not going to interrupt the next Toxic Bloom because what I'm going to do is I'm going to run over and try to interrupt the Revitalize when it goes through. Okay, now I have the rest of my cooldowns available. I'm going to use those. Make sure I reapply this. Expurgation Dot. Again, the next Toxic Bloom I'm not going to interrupt. I need to move away a little bit. Revitalize being interrupted by that person. That person being the Druid. It was the exact worst time for the revitalized cast to go through i couldn't get to the boss or the other boss i should say i'm going to step away along with these people that way everyone moves out of the same thing we conserve some space we're going to switch over to the blue caster okay another pair of afflicted souls coming through we're going to take care of those trying to save some globals for the pre or priest not the priest but the monk oof a lot of these are starting to pile up on the boss. I don't like that. I should have held my Wake of Ashes so that I can use it during wings. That was a mistake, but not a huge one. He also just failed my kick on a boss that doesn't stop casting. That's one. impressive. I'm going to use Shield of Vengeance. And now I have some cooldowns to use. There's two Afflicted Souls. I'll take care of the other one for the healer. Okay, we got a kick in on one of the Water Bolts. I should have been doing that more often, but I've been a little bit flustered and commentating a bit too much. The casters, for some reason, are deciding to stand very close to the boss, which leads to more area denial near the bosses so i don't really have much room to maneuver in it's a little bit annoying but it's i can i can work with it i can make it work there we go very good that was very nice this healer's blasting the hps very proud of uncle panda <laughs> i just realized their name is uncle panda <laughs> we are pulling this i'm going to kick this to keep this guy moving hopefully somebody kicks the pyroblast i'm going to use a shield of vengeance i did not have shield of vengeance up but i guess it didn't hurt as much as i thought it would uh, i'm not going to drop all my cooldowns here because these mobs are just about dead I'm, i will drop some off heals here though i look for the next cast i can interrupt the next cast of whatever comes up it's the frost bolt as you can see the helpless or hapless assistance just fell down very very quickly so it would have been a waste to use cooldowns there hoping that the next pull is big enough and it seems to be okay now i can drop my cooldowns on this tank is making me a little bit anxious he keeps dropping very low but he's a blood dk so that's kind of just his thing he also refuses absolutely refuses to use dancing rune blade or dancing rune weapon or whatever the heck it's called doesn't even matter he doesn't use it and that is a big part of his active mitigation because it gives you 40 percent parry chance uh, maybe even more with additional talents i'm not sure Managed to interrupt that Pyroblast. I got in range in time. I'm going to do some off heals. I'm going to step out of that. And I can't kick that Pyroblast. Somebody else has to do it. Come on, Snooky, where are you? Oh, it's off cooldown. It's not off cooldown yet. My bad. I didn't mean to call you out, Snooky. See, Snooky took care of it just then and there. So sorry. I'm sorry for doubting you, Snooky. And that should be it for the trash before the boss. Tank seems to want to pull the next group. Maybe he's waiting for his dancing rune blade weapon to thingy thing to come back off cooldown. We're going to go ahead and pull these two as well because we need the percent. We need 6%. Each of the assistants is 1%. So I decided to just do the pull for the tank and, you know, save us some time. Bit of a dick thing to do, but I think the tank wasn't aware of it. So I'm trying to help, not just pad the damage. We don't have uh, wings for this. Or sorry, not wings. We don't have... Uh, drums for this i'm going to hold off on my damage for just a little bit the reason i held my cooldowns there for just a second was because i wanted to uh make sure that my wake of ashes is up for when i drop all my cooldowns i'm going to drop all my cooldowns now as building up holy power there so i can put more holy uh power spenders into my rotation while my offensives are rolling i'm going to try and position for this do i need to help anyone i need to help uncle panda i think he took care of things on his own as well so that's good things being baited in that direction i'm going to use a stun break to get out of that and we're looking to 
to help Uncle Panda. He's healthy enough. We're going to get rid of the afflicted soul for Uncle Panda. It feels weird saying Uncle Panda over and over again. If I can help it, his name's Uncle Panda. I'm going to sack Snooky. That'll help them survive because they don't have a defensive up at the moment. I have a full set of cooldowns. I'm going to just use it to bring this fight to an end. There is only one afflicted soul, so I don't have to do anything else. I'm going to reposition. Keep DPSing. Okay. Tank used Icebound Fortitude to get out of that stun. Very good. And there we go. My cooldowns are going to be mostly up by the time I have to fight the next boss because of this little RP where this NPC that spawns in over here runs over. Has he already run over? I don't know. No, there he is. He took a sweet time. But yes, that's why I use all my cooldowns at the end of the fight, because I know this RP takes so long that I'll just be able to use all these cooldowns again. Uncle Panda, definitely the MVP of this run. He has a lot of interrupts. His HPS is impressive. He's kept us alive through some really wonky pulls, like the double abomination pull. And these bosses are no joke, even on a 13 fortify or 13 tyrannical. All right, tank maintaining aggro, making sure that the first slam goes in the direction it needs to go, which is away from everyone else. In an ideal world, I would hold my cooldowns until the um, ad comes out but this is not an ideal world and i am not a patient man so i used all my stuff before the ad even came out which is again not ideal but you know i'll live with it we're just gonna cleave the ad here have a wake of ashes go off during the ad's life which is good it means i hit two targets with a wake of ashes this is when you should use all your cooldowns by the way your defensive cooldowns not all of them but at least one of them so that we can get rid of or negate the damage from the ad the ad basically does the same thing as the boss which is the slam the tank is just refusing to step on any of these plants so i'm having to run around in circles around the boss looks like the druid is going to take care of the ones that are in the back because he has the roar available for it <laughs> drop all my cooldowns again not while the ad is alive which is i don't know maybe i should consider that a mistake i'm not 100 sure but it doesn't make a huge difference we're going to go ahead and sack the druid next time around when the ad comes out and starts casting its slam i'm going to do it right now because it lasts long enough it's not an issue and i'm going to use a defensive of my own in order to negate some of that damage probably should have used my anything with the stuffy stuff what's it called field of vengeance now this time around i am going to try and actually dps the boss a little bit more i grab the plants that are nearby because the druid takes care of all the other ones i'm going to take care of the other afflicted soul the healer beat me to it i missed one of the plants over there i want to interrupt with it it with it i want to interrupt it is what i'm trying to say there we go uncle panda took care of it uncle panda absolutely the mvp of this run written eruption coming out soon i'm going to drop all my cooldowns once it's up i also want to have a wake of ashes for the start of this cooldown rotation boss might be going down i'm just going to drop my cooldowns i don't care about the ad boss is basically dead so there we go that's everbloom 13 much much smoother than the first run because well we finished it as opposed to the first one but yeah the first one just wasn't uh it wasn't happening not with the people that applied to that run unfortunately now let's see if i can get a piece of loot from here no i can't but uncle panda got his coagulated genosar blood which is really really good and mosqui got a offhand hopefully they make they can make use of that gear thank you for the run the dk doesn't really know where his interrupt button is that said what i could do better is just use my cooldowns more. I think I saved my cooldowns far too often to try and use it on a bigger group. I don't think it was a horrible thing to do, but I think I could have done better, just use them more often. So I had 30 casts of Wake of Ashes and I had 16 casts of Final Reckoning. This is consistent with a 16 minute or a 15 minute run of the dungeon. We had a 19 minute run of the dungeon. So I could have used these abilities a lot more often and gotten a lot more damage out. So what I'm learning is I shouldn't hesitate as much, even if there is a bigger group coming. Although at the same time, the bigger groups are the more dangerous ones. So I want those to die more quickly. I don't know. It's a balancing act. Sometimes the best DPS is the DPS you don't do <laughs> because you don't blow your cooldowns on three mobs only to pull a group of 10 mobs or 15 mobs and not have any cooldowns to use. With Paladin, I guess it feels a little bit different because the cooldowns are all one minute, excluding Wake of Ashes, which is 30 seconds. But you kind of want to use them all in conjunction that's what i talk about when i say my cooldowns are out of sync because ideally you'll use all of your abilities like all, everything and then everything will come up after a minute the times where this gets messed up is when you're stuck doing multiple things like let's say two afflicted show up in the middle of me using my cooldowns i might put off putting uh wake of ashes to use while i use cleanse toxins and heal the other mob especially if i don't have the holy power to heal the other afflicted soul i have to spend more globals in order to get the holy power to heal the afflicted soul and those like three four globals that i have to use puts my wake of ashes a few seconds behind which can desync my cooldowns and then also while i'm busy taking care of the afflicted the mobs might die and then i don't have a reason to use wake of ashes and then i really desync my cooldowns so 
that's that's what I'm talking about when I mentioned desync and cooldowns. In an ideal world, I would take care of one of the uh, afflicted. That would be one global, and I can go back to DPSing. In an even more ideal world, the pulls would last long enough for me to actually use, use all my cooldowns and not be running around with wings after the pull. But that's that'll happen once I go into higher keys. Speaking of going into higher keys, we have a 16 black rook hold. I'm feeling... Uh, I'm feeling lucky. I think I'll go do that, or at least try to. So let's see if we can. So now we're starting a 16 Everbloom. I'm gonna see if I can't uh, upgrade the old weapon now that I have enough of these worm crests. I don't think I'll be crafting anything with worm crests. So I'm just gonna upgrade the weapon as much as I can. That should be the highest impact thing that I can do as far as upgrades are concerned. Apparently I've also unlocked the green coloration of the iridescent soul cleaver. So I have to actually transmog this now. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna head over to Black Rick Hold while I wait for some applicants. Well, between these two, I guess I'm going to take the 476 on Holy DK with 1.1k rating. There's some pretty high rated people applying to groups that they don't really have much reason to be in. I don't quite get it. Maybe they're looking for the easy aspect crests, I guess. It's been excruciatingly slow to find any groups and put any groups together. Not find any groups. I haven't been looking for groups I only host, but yeah, it's been rough. One of the three applicants that I currently have, this warrior is the lowest rated, so we're going to go with them. I think now that I'm doing the 16 key, I'm just going to find these kinds of ratings. So yeah, now we kind of sit there and hope for a healer and tank to apply. We, we have a tank, so we're going to take this tank because otherwise I'm going to be sitting here for another half an hour and spend more time forming the group than actually doing the dungeon. 1,600 rated druid healer. I think that's okay. Yeah, I think I'll just take them. Uh, I think what I'll have to do is I'll have to go do lower keys. Like I'm just going to do a bunch of tens to flesh out the weak so that I have a bit of rating so that people don't hesitate applying to the group. I think I'm taking basically just about anything that applies to my groups just so I can actually do a dungeon. So we're going to go see how this goes. Maybe we have another situation like we did in the 14 Everbloom. I hope not. Here we are in a 16 Black Rook Hold. Let me show you the group that we're working with. Some geared people and some 2.2k rated people. Well, the tank is. It's going to be very good for my chances. The reason I'm running with someone who's that, um, let's say, high rated is because, well, I don't have much of a choice. There's not many people applying to my group because I'm not very high rated, so they don't trust me. And I understand that. I'm going to use a defensive here. There's going to be some very bolstered targets here. I'm going to use my blind to interrupt something. Start casting <laughs> my other defensive. Attempted to... I'm going to... Ooh, okay. I was going to bubble, but uh, the thing died. The thing that was going to one-shot me from all the bolster stacks died, so I feel good now. I'm going to quickly mark the tank so I can see where I can and can't stand. I'm trying to not get hit by strike down, which is a really strong frontal cone and it's also a very wide frontal cone i'm going to interrupt this next thing i'm switching target to the thing casting sacrifice soul because it takes extra damage and it also reduces the damage being done to nearby other units so i can switch to fully single target on that when it's casting i have to step further away so that it only hits me oh the tank is kind of pointing the strike down at the group. The tank's also moving around quite a bit, so you saw that four people there got hit by the strike down. This time it was only the tank, so the tank has adjusted his positioning. That's very good. That is very dangerous on a fortified. That would have been just straight up four people dead probably, so. Cleansing all the afflicted souls that I can. Uh, somebody else is cleansing. I'm assuming it is the uh, resto druid. I'm not sure. Could be the tank as well. It's one of the two druids, because neither the tank nor the DK can do so. I'm going to go ahead and just use drums here. It's not ideal. Maybe it would have been better off used on the first group, but it's not horrible either. You only have one ranged, which is the Resto Druid, but if the Resto Druid kitty weaves, then we might run into an issue of there being the thingy thing. These people need to move, otherwise they're going to get feared. Tank is also sort of positioning weirdly, which is uh, he's not moving the thing into a corner. We're going to cleanse one of these. Other one got cleansed. It looks like the Resto Druid's doing it. I just saw him go out of cat form to cleanse that. Tank is keeping the boss in the center, which is not ideal. I got soul echoes again. That's really annoying because I would prefer not to have to deal with soul echoes as a melee. I'm losing out on auto attacks while doing this, which is one of my ways to generate. That person's going to get feared if they don't get out of there. Yep. Uh, what, what, what do I even do? This one's evading me. <laughs> I was just watching that poor warrior um, run into the corner and just get absolutely exploded by my thingies. I'm going to use a defensive, the warrior's dead again, because he didn't use any sort of defensive. Warrior's having a hard time. Warrior's definitely having a hard time. The damage is there, but the tactic knowledge and awareness might not be so much. I'm also desyncing my cooldown, so my DPS looks atrocious at the moment. Soul Echoes for a third time. I'm super happy about that, as you might imagine. Trying to not 
take up as much space. I think I'm good now. I'm gonna wake of ashes and that should be enough to finish off the boss. I'm going to start rezzing immediately. I need to move in that direction. People are running every which way. None of them are rezzing it would seem. I didn't die so I didn't, don't need to reapply my food buff. The food buff. By reapply I mean I, <laughs> I didn't, I never applied once so maybe I should just sit down and eat. Huh? The warrior says thank you and sorry for noobing it. <laughs> it's okay, we all derp out sometimes. I'm curious to see how the group will handle the spiders. Uh, I know for a fact the second I see that the tank is standing still, I'm going to drop absolutely everything on them and make sure that he does survive. Okay, I see him swiping, see him thrashing. I'm going to drop absolutely everything here. Make sure that these go down. I'm going to bubble, make sure that the tank has aggro. He can take the stacks. Me, not so much. Looking for heals on whoever need, whoever needs those. We're going to sack the tank and we're going to use another defensive. I have three stacks of it that have been dispelled. Tank should also get dispelled. I'm going to cleanse one of these and heal the other so that the druid can keep his dispels for the tank, which needs them now at 12 stacks. It's starting to hurt even the tank. Okay, and the druid did the spell very good with just the big spider alive we could move to the next group but the spider's almost dead so tank is opting not to we're gonna give the tank some movement speed help him position this group targeting the arcanist and setting it as focus so that i can easily interrupt it whenever i need to and to save my stun for the risen scout to avoid oh i'm going to blind right now i'm gonna stun everything oh it's the warrior dead never mind i shouldn't really react like that to the warrior dying because um i think that's going to be the running theme of this dungeon is the warrior falling over i'm not sure what exactly he died to but i could check details but i don't think it's that pertinent i keep not using the mind toll because the mobs are almost dead and then i feel like it's a waste i guess it's just going to be living desynced you have two risen scouts i have to save my wake of ashes to interrupt one of them there we go i'm going to target the other one and i'm going to hit that one with uh my regular stun there we go the reason i look for the risen scouts is because it's unavoidable damage you can avoid it by line of sighting but this isn't a great spot to line of sight i don't have a blind available and one of those is going through with two stacks of bolster it's been knocked back that's very good i'm looking to kill this one before he kills us and i'll cleanse the afflicted soul afterwards very good wasted my wake of ashes there should have waited for my wings to use it at the same time as well as uh, i should have looked to use it as a stun because what wake of ashes does is it stuns oh this is pretty bad i'm gonna use the defensives here i don't have blinding light or anything looking to see how i can make this situation better okay druid popped a lot of hps there we're going to look to heal this one before it goes off there we go i was struggling to build up the holy power for it yeah the healer is asking us to kick um so the arcane blitz which is good that's very much indeed what we should do i'm going to use my wake of ashes to stun the first knife dance and i'll use my regular stun to stun the second one after that i'm just going to hope that okay the bear used one of his interrupts or used his incapacitating roar i'm going to heal this because the healer's not here yet it looks like there he is maybe i didn't need to heal it but no big deal what is done is done that stun might take someone out it doesn't no the warrior likes standing in it it looks like so we're just gonna <laughs> heal him up afterwards drop all my cooldowns here so I have them roughly when the ads come in standing in a double arrow barrage those got interrupted very good so far solid group tanks doing very well he's using his uh, cc he's using his interrupts healer has been able to heal us through some pretty nasty situations the arms warriors having a bit of trouble surviving but arms is relatively squishy compared to fury I should say overall warriors are still pretty tanky I'm going to use my wake of ashes here just to Put it on cooldown. I want it to come back off cooldown once the ads come out. I'm going to cleanse one of these, heal the other, let the healer do his thing. I'm going to try and drop this over here. I'm going to use my shield of vengeance because I will inevitably take damage here. Very good. We will glaive on solar lights, but they moved in closer to the group. I don't know why I used a heal there. I was just looking at health bars and reacted to it. An instinct, if you will. Here come the ads. I'm going to wait for them to get grouped up. We're going to kick the first one, make sure that it's movable to where it needs to be moved. And now we can drop all of our cooldowns. So we're going to cleanse one of these. Ironically, it was the one that the healer had healed up quite a bit. We're going to stun the arcanist to make sure he doesn't keep casting. There we go. Now I can focus on the boss while cleaving the other dude. We could do a big pull after this with a bloodlust but i don't know if that's a great idea considering the fact that it's bolster week and there's some there's some very high hp enemies in that pull which will survive longer than the rest of them because we don't have any specific like any prio damage really the mark isn't on me it's on solar lights who's standing in the middle of the room it's going to be a bit messy but nothing too bad we're going to cleanse one of these we're going to heal the, never mind the druid already cleansed it 
Very good. Using all of my cooldowns here, because this is tyrannical after all, we want to make sure that we use our cooldowns on the bosses to make them more survivable. Though with bolstering, honestly, I'm still more nervous about the actual trash than I am about the bosses. And there we go. We got the Druid Roar, so we're going to be moving a little bit more quickly. I'm going to try and use my horse to get up there even quicker. There's only four boulders. Very good. Reduces the chance of people getting smacked in the face. Like Danny used to say, rule number one, no balls to the face. Giving the tank movement speed so he can do his pull. This is quite a big pull. I am nervous. I'm going to cleanse this and heal the other. I want to make sure that the... Okay, we're just going to use Wake of Ashes here, even though I don't have wings up, because I want to stun everything. I'm going to look for a blind afterwards. Like right now. There we go. There's the blind. Divine Toll. Okay. The Blade Lord was killed fast enough. We're going to heal the tank a little bit. That was nerve-wracking, but we managed to kill the Blade Lord quickly enough so he didn't actually take out the tank. Because if the tank starts, or rather, if the Blade Lord starts channeling the thing at the tank, the tank's probably going down when the Blade Lord has that many stacks of uh, bolster. I'm going to stun everything here. I don't have blind for this pull. I'm probably not going to have it for the next pull either, because these are pretty quick. Is it going to start getting bolstered? They're also going to start getting their buffs from drinking the, the, the stuff. Someone used an AoE interrupt. I would assume it was the tank. There's also another knockback, probably from the tank, from how they were knocked back by it. There we go. We actually managed to survive that quite handily but again i'm more worried about the blade lords i'm going to hold my wake of ashes here until i see some cast bars wake of ashes again stuns demons and undead and that's why i'm holding it here to interrupt like so i managed to interrupt the both of the blade lords healer managed to heal that up the full i kind of don't i'm going to use my cooldowns here because i'm worried about these blade lords killing our tank so i'm just going to stun this blade lord there we go i have divine toll left for for cooldowns i'm going to start running up ahead i have two divine steed chargers so i can actually get up there pretty excuse me I kind of hopped in place and died. It was kind of weird looking. We're going to wait for a res from the healer because that's much faster than me running back with no divine steed charges or anything like that. In general, you should kind of always wait for the healer to res you when you die on these stairs. Yeah, even the healer saying don't release because he knows that a lot of people will just release instantly. I think there's a component of shade shame to it. I'm going to put this dominator on focus so that I can interrupt it whenever. I'm going to kick it right now uh there's two of them down there i'm just going to cleanse them just to make sure there's gonna be another cast going off here in a second there it is i hopefully somebody interrupts it thank god it i don't have my cat or my interrupt available for the other one but i can kick the next one that goes off which is this one that i'm targeting there it goes the other one needs to get interrupted the dk handle it very good and we're good to move on to the next group very nice I have an interrupt available. I'm going to kick this one that's still moving because he's going to be the one that's going to cast first. There he is. We're going to interrupt that. We're going to put a focus on the other one. That way I can use my focus macro to interrupt without switching target. I don't have an interrupt available, so I can't do anything about that. They can't be CC'd because they're level 71 enemies. I can't interrupt that either, but the tank takes care of it. I can interrupt the other one now after I cleanse. There we go. There's the interrupt. I'm going to heal that. Nope, never mind. The druid cleanse that it looks like. I don't have an interrupt available, so I'm relying on the group to do these. I'm not going to use my cooldowns. I'm saving them for the boss, which I will bloodlust. And bloodlust. There we go. We're going to drop all of our cooldowns while bloodlust is active. Someone's blocking that. It seems to be the... Okay, the tank kind of... No, the... <laughs> I saw a bear going, so I thought it was the tank. But it wasn't the tank. It was the uh, resto druid who just kind of ran in. Otherwise, it would have been the warrior. The warrior was standing in position to intervene. It was the warrior or the DK. One of them. I'm just going to line up with the rest of these guys. Make sure that there's no chance for the boss to hit our healer. We don't want our healer dying. The warrior seems to be dropping off the line on the side so that we have more room. That's very good. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. Tank is sort of doing the same thing, trying to line it up so that it doesn't take up our room. I can block this one. DK standing in front of it. DK doesn't have it. I didn't catch that there was another thingy thing on top of us. So that's my bad. Thingy thing on top of us that doesn't explain what I'm trying to say. I didn't realize that there was another spiteful. I was so focused on the lines and the charges. Okay, there's one. Is there another? I don't see one at least. Okay. So I'm going to continue focusing on DPS. Hateful Gaze is coming through. I haven't blocked anything yet, so I'll use my Absorb Shield, stand in front of it. And I seem to have deflected it, so I'm going to use my Absorb Shield to stand in this. That way I can make it get fully absorbed and deal its full amount of damage, so I don't waste it. Boss is almost dead, but we are running out of room. Okay, the Druid can just block that. The tank seems to be trying to block it. <laughs> get down, Mr. President. He jumped into the line of fire for our healer. Love to see it. And the boss should be dead here in a second. I'm going to save my... Uh, 
Blessing of Freedom in order to give the tank movement speed once we get over here and his roar runs out. There we go. You have your movement speed. You can keep going, bud. You got it. You got it. I'm not going to hit them, so you have aggro. I'm going to cleanse this as soon as it comes through so we can focus our efforts on this. I'm going to try and avoid that. I'm going to drop all my cooldowns and stun everything. Wake of Ashes. Use my Divine Toll as, well, as well. Looking to see if I need to buff anyone. There was no risk of them getting hit again by another Raven's Dive. I'm going to stun this one so don't trust them to get out of it. The other one should be dead before we have to do anything about it. I could give the tank movement speed yet again with Blessing of Freedom. Cleanse this. Is there another one? It got cleansed by the Druid or healed. I'm not sure. I can stun everything, which is what I'm going to do. And I can use Blinding Light to interrupt the upcoming Swirlies. There's one. I'm going to interrupt one. The other one I can't. It's not on me. It's also not on the healer. I will save my bop for the healer. I have my... Yeah, I'll use my human stun removal. There's nothing else to really use it on. There's another one coming through in a second here. I'm going to stun that one. No, I'm not because it's on cooldown. Do I not have the cooldown removal talent? That one got a lot of us. So I just used my bubble to make sure that I saved myself from it. I wasn't paying attention to the um, afflicted, but luckily the healer managed to take care of it. Good job, healer. That would have been my bad if that went off. Okay, I'm going to use all my cooldowns here. And then after the thingy thing with the stuffy stuff, after the first guile, I should be able to use my cooldowns again, which is exactly when we want to use the cooldowns because then everyone's buffed and ready and all that. That's also when you should use your, um, whatchamacallit, it's bloodlust if you have bloodlust ready for this boss. With the time spent in the dungeon, we just didn't have time to use it on that boss or on this boss. We were simply too quick. I'm going to use my Wake of Ashes into a boss that's not doing anything because I just want to keep my add-on, my add-ons, <laughs> my cooldowns synced up and I also want to pad my damage. I could bop the tank to remove unerring shear, but I don't feel that's necessary. I think the tank is tanky enough to take care of that. I'm going to sack the warrior because he's been dying a lot so he might be squishier than i like to think we're gonna sack him and i'm going to use one of my defensives there we go i'm not going to use my offensives yet because otherwise i'm going to be if i do that i'm going to be stuck with uh wings for like 10 seconds while we run around away from the thingy with the stuff the lines that spawn on the ground so i'm gonna wait for the lines to go through yeah dreadlord skyle here it is see if i had used it i would still have wings at this point and then that would have felt pointless I'm gonna give the uh, not the tank sorry the warrior movement speed because i saw him pretty close to the lines want to make sure he's nice and safe so i have a bop available with the bop i can remove the um the debuff that keeps stunning people over and over again i'm gonna use a defensive here using all my offensives stinging swarm is on the dk dk can just use his uh i spawn fortitude to immune the stuns he's so i'm not gonna use my bop on him shadow bolts coming through i'm gonna use a what are they called jesus christ my brain is just not cooperating right now stinging swarm is on the warrior we're going to go ahead and put bop on him i'm slept because i was trying to get into a position where i can use my mouse over macro on the afflicted but the boss is almost dead and indeed is dead and we are done with our 16 micro cold we even three started very nice this is a good group this is a good group and i also got keystone master for uh clearing a 15 pretty cool well 15 or higher because i cleared a 16 didn't get any loot did get a splintered spark so there's a neck with versatility mastery i'll roll for it slash roll the dk linked it and said roll so i'm just gonna roll and see if i get it nobody else is rolling so it looks like i'm gonna get myself a necklace upgrade that's a good chunk of versatility i like it Picasso. Mastery is not perfect, but I, I like it enough to equip it. It's going to give me a good chunk more, well, item level and also stamina. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm also doing relatively well with haste. I've got 5.2k for my item level. I feel like that's plenty. It was a pretty smooth run. I enjoyed it. Warrior had some hiccups early on, but we all do. We all mess up like the warrior does sometimes. So no biggie there. DPS wise, I kept desyncing my, my cooldowns. Not too happy with that. Uh, fell bad pup padding, of course. It's there, but I'm pretty happy with my single target DPS. I almost always had cooldowns available for bosses, even multiple ones. So I feel like I did well. I prioritized the damage where we needed it to make sure that we were safe. Pretty good run. That was pretty fun. I think I won't be running a 19 with 457 item level. It's going to be pretty hard to get anyone to queue up for my 19 while I'm hosting it with how much rating? 832. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be happening. I could probably go through it and I could probably do relatively well, but finding people that actually want to run it with me, that's another story entirely so what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to drop my key to like a 10 or a 13 or something probably a 13 just so i can get higher item level gear to drop and i'm going to be running those over and over and over again until i have every dungeon cleared at least on a 13. that way i'll have some rating and then i might have a better time choosing picking and choosing who i get to invite because there might be more people interested in actually applying for my runs it was really hard to put these groups together because my rating was atrocious it still is so nobody was really interested in and actually
actually, you know, applying to a group being led by someone who has like 500 rating or whatever. So I'm going to hopefully fix that. But that's going to be for the next episode. I think I'm going to end this one here. So if you enjoyed it, drop a like. Let me know what you liked about it in a comment down below. If you had fun, make sure you subscribe because there's more episodes coming. And if you're feeling particularly generous, you can become a channel member. Channel members get guaranteed replies to their comments, as well as nice little shout outs like Switchikins got today. But as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next episode.